Hey guys, it's me, Ebby, from Ebby's Creations, and I am here today to do a video on one of my favorite paints in the entire universe. Uh, it's actually the Old Fashioned Mill Paint Company. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about because I call it, um, versus the other market uh, paint, the other paints on the market that are called milk paint, um, and as well as chalk paint by Annie Sloan, and we have your other chalky finish paints that are acrylic based, and then we have like CC Caldwell's chalk plus clay paint. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about each paint, and then we're going to talk about milk paint, because a few guys are asking why I like it so much. Um, a few of you are intimidated by it. I actually was intimidated by it at first, but it's actually not that hard to play around with. So once you get used to it, it's actually the coolest and funnest paint, in my opinion. So we're going to talk about it. And for those of you that are not familiar with uh, the brand, the Old Fashioned Milk Paint Company, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. It was started in 1974 by uh, Charles Thibault, and I I feel like I'm saying his last name wrong, and I've spoken to Anne on the phone, but I've never asked her for her last name, how to say it. I've only read it. <laughs> so if I am, Anne, yeah, I am so sorry. <laughs> so it was started by Anne's father, and is the current CEO and president of, um, of the uh, Old Fashioned Milk Paint Company in 1974, and he was essentially the first person to market and package um, modern-day powdered form casein-based milk paint. And uh, the reason it's called milk paint is because it's actually made with milk. It's made with casein, which is a protein found in milk, um, the old school way, because we know that it's been used, I, I think, as far back as, I want to say, the 14th or 15th century, and I know it became very popular, excuse me, in the 17th century. So um, you can see it, furniture for furniture anyway. It was very popular in French uh, furniture and Italian um, furniture as well. So it's been used forever, but the way, so the old school way to make it is uh, you can separate the curds in the way, then you dry it out, which it's left with, you know, the, the actual, um, besides the milk part or the waterish part, um, and you, you dry out the part that's left and um, the curds, and then you have to push it through cheesecloth and dry it out, and then you have to like filter it again. It's like, it's a really long process. I um, have seen recipes for it. I've seen how to do it. I've never done it because it's frankly too much work. <laughs> So um, this stuff is really cool because it's all dried out for you, and it's used. Uh, it's pigmented with earth pigments, uh, so it's all natural. And the really cool thing about this product, and I'm trying not to sound like a giant ad for this, but um, essentially this is actually going to go on their page, so kind of is. But um, um, you know, the really cool part, the reason that I fell in love with the company before I started working with them was because of this little label right here. If you can see it. And um, it is actually certified bio-based in the USA, um, which means that it meets all the standards for the government uh, to, that, that it's, it's actually, you know, agriculturally bio-based. So I love that. <laughs> it's green. It's the greenest paint you can get, really, um, because it's essentially all natural. It's just milk powder and uh, <laughs> pigments, earth pigments. So there's no, obviously, no acrylics, no binders, no nothing can use an acrylic binder in it, but when you use it the way that I'm going to show you how to use it right now, it's all natural and safe. And it's the only paint that I would recommend. There's like one other paint on the market that I would recommend for uh, like baby cribs and such. I would recommend this one as well. So we're going to do a door. Um, this is a pint. With this pint, you can usually, it, it, it's, it's actually six ounces of powder and it makes a pint of paint when you mix it. And the way to mix paint, which we're not going to do here because it's been done so often. I think so many different people have done videos for that. Um, you mix equal parts paint and equal parts powder. Um, you can weigh it. That's the most accurate way. I personally don't even bother measuring anymore. I just kind of eyeball it because I know what the paint texture is supposed to look like. And it gets very foamy when you mix it, so you got to let it sit for a few minutes. And once it sits, it's just like regular paint. You see? Um, it smells kind of like I guess like lime almost, um, and it smells like, uh, and it smells like like a little bit like milk. And important to know, in its powder form, and this is what a gallon looks like. This is being, well, what's left of a gallon? Because I've, I've done actually a full buffet in this, and um, this is what the door is here for. And I've done a few other tables and stuff, and it's still this much left because a little bit goes a long way. It's actually really, really, really awesome coverage for uh, what it is. Now. Um, 
now that I've mixed my paint, um, it's a really important thing to know is that once it's mixed, it's only good for two weeks because it's milk, so it spoils. And it actually smells god awful when it spoils. I left it in a jar for too long and I opened it and I was like, oh, I realized that, yeah, indeed it does spoil. So you want to use, only, you only want to make what you're going to use um, for me, and that's just literally this much for now. So, um, you know, in this powdered form though, um, as long as it's, and you can see I have it in a Ziploc bag and then I put it into another container. Um, as long as it's airtight, it has a re really crazy long shelf life. I think of like two years or something else. I might be wrong um, how many years exactly, but it's a long time. So, um, you know, make sure that you keep it properly and store it properly. You don't want it extreme temperatures, um, not too cold, not too hot. I mean, when Anne shipped it, when she shipped, I think my first shipment of the milk paint was really freezing outside. So she actually put heat packs in it because she's like super careful like that. So, um, I think I told you anything, everything I need to know about the company, uh, the professional paint and milk. This is going to be a really long video, guys. I'm sorry. And um, a little bit about what the difference between milk paint and chalk paint is. Um, when I say chalk paint, I'm referring to, of course, Andy Sloan chalk paint, um, which I'm not going to get into the chemical makeup of it right now um, on air, but so those of you that follow me on Facebook or on paint groups with me know um, what I feel is in the binder and chemically what it's made of. Um, it's a phenomenal paint. Um, but, you know, the difference between that, this is actually the, the original chalk to finish paint because it does dry to a chalk finish. Um, but the difference is that it's made either with calcium carbonate, you know, or another form of chalk, or if it's going to be made with milk. Uh, there's another paint on the market that's also phenomenal paint, and I do work with them as well, um, general finishes, uh, but that's not a true milk paint. They call it milk paint because, and I think they say it somewhere on their site, uh, the colors, the original colors were inspired by the old old world milk paint colors. Um, ever since then, they've grown, and they have a, more colors now that don't really look like milk paint, but um, they are, they're called milk paint, but it's actually acrylic-based paint, and that's not chalk finish paint. It's just smooth. It's, it's really cool. It goes on very easily, and it's just and acrylic paint. Uh, anything else? And then you have your, like CC Caldwell, which you guys know is my favorite real deal chalk with clay paint, mineral paint. Um, and they are a chalk and clay milk paint. Uh, milk paint, listen to me. Chalk and clay paint. Um, and it contains chalk and clay. And it smells like clay when you smell it, no odor as well. This doesn't have odor. As you see, I'm painting inside. I paint inside all the time with this, with this paint. It's safe to do so. So I think I'm going to switch cameras and I'm going to show you how to prep the surface. Um, this this is the kind of paint that if you're using a pre-finished surface uh, like I'm using right now, you will check. It will get that chippy old world like delicious shabby chic look that everybody loves. Um, it doesn't have to though. It can be very modern looking paint depending on how you, you know what you use. If you're painting raw, anything raw that you've built, um, raw wood, it really absorbs. Like you have no idea, it does not chip at all. Um, because it was created for porous surfaces. Um, when it's not porous, that's when it chips. It lifts away from it, and that's what makes it like chip, you know, and look really cool. But um, the other way to do it, if you're using a pre-finished surface, is you can uh, purchase their Extra Bond, which is an acrylic binder, and um, uh, medium, and uh, an acrylic binding medium. And it's it's actually like greener than most acrylic mediums. I like it um, when I'm using it for specific pieces. I just like the chip paint though, so I always use it to chip. But um, but you can use it and they sell it in their on their website as well as they sell it through retailers and um, that's how you uh, you know that's how you get a non chippy look on a pre finished surface. I'm gonna switch cameras and I'm start with you. Okay, this is taking me so long, guys. I apologize. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Oh look, the uh, mic is like totally in the way. All right, so I've mixed my paint. This is what it looks like. And the consistency isn't too runny, but not too thick. If you want to use it as a wash, because you can use this to whitewash, and then obviously you just add more water, and that's how you get a whitewash. But um, this is buttermilk. Their color is buttermilk. Um, and it's a, like a yellowish cream color, and I actually added a couple uh, teaspoons of, um, of slate, I think. Oh, slate, yeah. So this is what slate looks like. Slate is like a gray color. And um, it's completely VOC free, like I said. So this is the uh, slate. So I added a couple teaspoons of that in there just because I wanted it to still be a neutral, but look a little bit cooler. It was too warm for the room that I wanted in. So that's how I, and you, you mix colors, it looks really cool. They have wonderful colors, but when you mix them, it's even funner. You can make all sorts of really neat colors with it. So I mix it 
Um, when I'm doing a small batch like this, I just use like a little popsicle stick. <laughs> And then I have a tiny little um, whisk that I use that's obviously no longer food safe, so I don't use it for food anymore, it's just for paint. And um, when I'm mixing a large batch, when I'm doing like a gallon paint or like a pint, you know, whatever, I have a, an immersion blender that, once again, it's not used for food anymore, it's just used for paint. And so I just stick it in there, you know, in the immersion blender and, and just mix well. Because, you know, you got to make sure you get all the powder mixed in well. So I want this to chip a little bit, but I don't want it to be like, crazy chipping so the easiest way to control chipping is to prep so i've cleaned this is actually i had stained it but i didn't like the two-tone look so i'm i started um you know taking away some of the stain as you can see right here i've uh i've uh went ahead and and, and and sanded a little bit so the way i do it the way i control the chipping and everybody has their own little tricks but this is my trick this is the way i do it um i go ahead and sand where i want it to really stay so um, sand away, just, you know, that way it gives it a little bit more to uh, grab onto, a little bit more surface area, and it's a little more porous than this shiny, you know, poly finish that I had on the stain. Actually, it's not a poly finish. It was a, I used a stain plus finish from CZ, so it's already in there. But um, I think I did actually go over it with poly, though. I'm not sure. <sighs> so I'm going to sand where I want it. Um, where I want it, where I want it to be uh, chippy, I'm not going to sand as much. So, like right here, I didn't sand too much. If you look, um, you know, I just I left it a little shiny there. But then over here, per se, you can see where the finish has really lifted there, where I really sanded it there. So that's just how I control it. Um, the other way I control it, my other trick is after I'm done painting it, um, I go ahead and take a, a, like a little. Um, a spackle knife and I help it chip you know or I'll take like a sanding sponge like this and I'll help it chip almost um, to where it can't chip anymore and if I find if it's too chippy if it's like a large large area I mix up over whatever paint I have left over I go ahead and mix in the acrylic binding aid the extra bond and to mix the extra bond it's equal parts mixed paint so it's once it's mixed already equal parts mixed paint uh, to to the uh, extra bond so whatever little bit of paint I have left, I add the extra bond to. And then I just go over the areas where I don't want it to be that chippy. And it stops the chipping because, of course, it's got the acrylic binding agent in it. So um, that's just my way. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this. And um, I'm going to go back up so you guys can see me while I talk. Because I'm just going to be sanding for a little bit. And then I'm going to clean it. So you can see me sanding. And you can see my face. So um, I'm going to keep sanding um, just where I want it. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean it. I have a, a rag here that I dropped, of course, for them. And um, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and clean it well. And I clean um, my surfaces. I, I know everybody likes to use uh, trisodium phosphate. I really don't. I feel it's too harsh of a chemical um, for, you know, some of the specific wood that, you know, and, and I, it just, it's too much. I do it, I use it for cabinets to degrees, but I don't use it for a piece of furniture like this. So I just actually use um, Simple Green, and you can buy that on Amazon, and it, I just dilute it because you're not supposed to use it directly on wood. So I um, dilute it, and then it's golden. Green, of course, which is big for me, as you know. And then um, it's not, you know, it's not as strong and crazy, and it doesn't damage the wood or soak in and, and damage it. I'm going to start painting, so I think I'm going to go back to the other camera. Um, let's go back. <laughs> okay, so we're back. So I use a pretty brush. You can use any other brush you like. Um, I just like pretty. And I buy them bulk off of Amazon, so they don't sponsor me. I wish they did. That'd be nice. <laughs> but they don't. So I'm going to start painting. And um, the only thing you have to remember, oops, I spilled it on there. That was fine. Okay. The only thing you have to remember is that, um, you know, it doesn't chip right away. So don't get like overwhelmed or scared or upset, you know, when it doesn't chip right away. And it is kind of predictable, like unpredictable um, per se. Like, honestly, I don't ever know. There's no guarantee um, which piece is going to chip. But like I said, you can control it, you know with how you apply the finish and how you prep for it. 
So for me, um, I kind of know, as you, as you use it a little more, you'll, you get more and more accustomed to it, so you know a little more about it. But as you look, you see how that's just one coat. You see how much coverage that has? It's like phenomenal. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to keep going, and I'll just take pictures um, because sometimes pieces will chip right away as they start drying, but some pieces will take like 24 hours to chip. So as it starts chipping, I'll come back and um, take some pictures and add them to the video and a blog post whenever we're done. I might actually put them up on home talk instead of a, a blog, but we'll see. But um, so I'm just painting. And um, as I paint, you can speed up the chipping process by using a heat gun if you want. We're not going to use that today. Um, obviously, it dries faster and then it chips faster. So. But look, that's just one coat, and it's not scary. You see, it's just regular paint. You don't have to be worried that it's, you know, going to be hard to paint with because it's not. It's actually just really easy, great coverage paint, um, and it goes on, like I said, very easily. So just a regular brush, nothing special. I'm not spending $50 a brush because I just refuse to. It's just me. Um, but, you know, I, I like synthetic brushes. Um, because then I don't get, you know, all the loose filaments and that you get from natural brushes. Again, personal preference. I know many painters that use natural brushes, and um, I just like, like I said, and I like the synthetic ones better. They're easier to clean, so you can't really stick a synthetic brush in some mineral spirits, you know. So, I mean, uh, yeah, an unnatural brush. You can stick a synthetic one. And that's what I do a lot, because I forget to clean my brush all the time, so. <laughs> So I'm gonna just show you what I have going here. And again, just painting, it's regular, it's nothing crazy, nothing difficult. I am simply painting. Um, and here, I'll move the camera so you guys can see the coverage. It's, you know, thicker paint, uh, depending on how you mix it. I like to mix it to this consistency where it's a little thick, but I can still, you know, control it. And, um, you know, if you wanna, like I said, if you want to use it as a wash, then you just need the thinner. And that's it. Let me see if I can quickly. When I post the final video, obviously it's going to go live on YouTube, but I will condense all of this crazy, crazy long painting process for you guys so you don't have to watch it again. But let me take a moment and show you um, up close. It's just paint. You see, it's like, this is just one coat. And it's it's going on there pretty well. You see, I actually love this color. It's so pretty. But it's gonna take a little bit to chip, so you won't be able to see that live. Um, but you will be able to see it in pictures later on. So I'm almost done painting. You see how easy that was? And look how much paint is left. And I've already given one full coat here almost. Um, it's, it, it really does, a little goes a long way with this paint. So I think that I've covered everything. Um, I'm just gonna let it dry and start watching, start photographing the chipping process so you guys can see. And then I might come back if it chips too much and do a quick video so you guys can see how I then go back over it and control the chipping. And again, it's not that hard to use. Look at this, it's like, <laughs> I'm almost done with it very simple and easy to work with and so I just wait for this to dry um, and then I'm going to give it another coat uh, you know I don't wait for it to chip and then give it a, another coat I wait for it to dry a little bit before I give it the second coat for the full coverage because I want it to chip away evenly and I don't want you know to be painting over the chips without the bogging agent in it um, that'll actually just pick up more paint so for me I just wait but I think I'm pretty much going to leave it for now. So I think I'm going to sign off here. Hold on one second. <laughs> and I think that's it um, for now. I'm going to, like I said, go ahead and take other pictures uh, as it starts chipping. I'm going to continue giving it this coat. And I hope I answered your questions. I know some of you had specific questions, and I tried to remember them and answer them. Um, hopefully I did. If I didn't, just leave me a comment. I will answer it or message me on Facebook or email me and I will definitely, definitely guide you through it. I have no problem doing that. I love this paint 
and um, that's why I decided to start working with them. And they've been awesome, and it is amazing. Um, if you start, or, you know, if you start using her paint, you'll realize a lot of times she'll even take orders herself. She's amazing. So, you know, I can't say enough good things about this paint. Go ahead and give it a try. Um, stay tuned to the blog for some fun old-fashioned milk paint opportunities. And um, if you're a blogger and you're interested in maybe trying it out, working with it, or getting to know a little more about it, give me a holler, and I will hopefully try and get you in contact with the right person. Okay? So um, I think that's it for now. So make sure you check them out on Facebook, old, the Old Fashioned Milk Paint Company. Um, it's Co, not the whole Fork Company. You can find them online and read all about the history of their paint and how they make it and what they use. And it's like a great, 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 great story. So read it. Um, actually, like a cool fact I just found out, Charles Tibble, the, uh, of the um, creator, he was president at the first Earth Day in 1970. I think that is like the coolest thing ever. If you know me, you know I like nerdy stuff like that. So, <laughs> um, And my son was born on Earth Day, so you guys know how much I love Earth Day. But, um, Go ahead, give it a try, and again, you know, just, it's fun. Don't be afraid of milk paint. Do not be afraid of it. It's nothing to fear, I promise you. All right, guys? Thank you for hanging out with me. Again, if you have questions, let me know. All right? We will see you next time. And I will post the pictures of this finished soon, okay? And I'll post some of the pictures of it children. All right? Bye, guys.